For decades, traditional media have set high standards of beauty. Now, social media may be setting even higher standards. New studies show men are just as affected as women. A Dev survey found women are much more likely to say their perception of beauty is shaped by social media. Research says 17% of young men think male models have made them more self-conscious about their appearance and their health. And makeup was found to increase people's perceptions of a woman's likability and trustworthiness. A British study found 68% of bosses wouldn't hire a woman who is not wearing makeup. Some CSUN students agree that media have influence. When you look at the pictures, you're like, damn, I wish I looked like that. And you're like, what can I do to look like that? And it's kind of like, after a while, just like, it bombards your psyche. Man, why can't I be like that? Or, you know, like, they're going to say, like, they're going to contradict like, themselves and, like, come down on themselves and like, be condescending upon themselves. And then the other side, you know, people are going to be like, you know what, if he can do it, I can do it. You look at them, they're like 250, and if you weigh, like, 120 or something, you're like, dang, I'm really skinny. You know, you see them, they like, really huge. I mean, I make it feel somewhat insecure. I have a friend that thinks that she should have a big butt and this and that. I'm looking like, you look fine the way you are. And she's like, well, um, Amber Rose and Kim Kardashian, da -da -da. I'm looking like, but that's not you. Like, you're you, so you should just be you. Both men and women feel pressure to conform to a specific form of beauty. Those who don't measure up are taught that they are failures and less desirable. On Point's Delmi Moran has more. Thank you, Brittany. And thank you to our guests for being here with us today. Today we have Instagram influencer and model Maggie Cherno. We have Director of Women's Research and Resource Center here on campus, Shira Brown, and psychologist Yvonne Thomas. My first question is actually for you, Yvonne. What are some psychological effects when someone suffers from having a negative body image? Well, definitely from what I've seen in my practice, I'm a psychologist in private practice in Los Angeles, there is definitely self-esteem that gets hit pretty hard. Um, if somebody doesn't measure up to what the media kind of shows as the classic image, men and women, men are going through some of this now too lately. Um, you know, a person feels like they're not good enough. They feel inadequate. They feel unattractive. They can even feel ugly. And they may not even, you know, look that different than any other person, but they don't feel good enough. And then there can be eating disorders that happen. You know, there can be bulimia, there can be anorexia, there can be um, a lot of exercising compulsively during the day, there can be diuretics to try to like keep a certain figure. The funny thing is, supermodels are coming out now from like, like the 70s and 80s and 90s, and they're admitting that they didn't even look like that. Mm -hmm. They were doing like some ways drastically mm -hmm. to look the way they looked, or they were photoshopped, or they were starving themselves. So the saddest part to me is, even these beautiful people, quote, quote, may not even look the way that we think they look. Mm -hmm. And there's always plastic surgery, you know, makeup, hair, yeah. nutritionists, the way that they're, they're photoed. So again, that's the funniest thing. And it's sad because they may not even look truly the way that people are trying to aspire to look. So people suffer a lot of low self-esteem and may not feel attractive, you know, for a romantic partner. I've had clients come in and they'll say, but, you know, women, I don't look like Angelina Jolie. I don't look like, like you know, Pamela Anderson. What guy's gonna want me? And then I say, do you want a man who only cares if you look like Pamela Anderson or Angelina Jolie? And then they're like, oh yeah, that's right. That's right, I have a say so in some of this too. So yeah, it's prevalent. It is prevalent, a lot of stuff going on that hurts self-esteem with the media and the depiction of what is beautiful for men and women. And actually going along with that, how do you believe the media is affecting the way women perceive their own bodies? We can start with you, Yvonne, and go along here. Well, uh, unfortunately, it's starting even younger than ever. It's not even just how women perceive their bodies. It's girls that are under 10 years old. You know, they aspire to look like Britney Spears or try to look like Christina Aguilera, um, you know, Ariana Grande. You know, they are aspiring, and it starts younger than it ever used to, where girls and women are getting hit with self-esteem. Um, because they feel like they have to look like their idol or they're not good enough. And again, the other part that's really interesting is sometimes then it kind of like permeates into other qualities, not just how they look. It starts to get into well, they don't feel smart enough, they don't feel funny enough, they don't feel popular enough. Um, and there are studies that people, when they see someone they think is beautiful or really handsome, I, I, I think it's called the halo effect, where a person start to attribute all these positive qualities to that person. They assume. I always tell my clients, do not assume anything. You know, find out and get to know the person. 
but they assume this person is funnier than them, more popular than them, smarter than them. And, and it, it may not even be true. Shira, do you want to add to that? Yeah, we know that uh, the media the media's job is to tell a story, right? So whether it's in television or magazines or on the radio, whatever it is, um, there's a narrative that's being created. And um, unfortunately, the story that's getting told um, to young uh, people, particularly young girls, but men and women really, or boys and girls, um, the story that's being created is about a particular body type, a particular skin type, a particular hair type, right? And so over and over the story gets um, recreated, right? But it's the same story, right? It, it doesn't really evolve. So we, we see these images of people um, who are um, who look the same across the board, right? So they have very light skin, they have a very particular body type, which is often under um, uh, average in terms of weight. We have um, hair uh, looks a particular way, right? There's a lot of hair straightening, um, efforts to make skin color lighter. So it's the same image that we see in all areas of the media. And so once that story gets told over and over, we start to believe that this is the reality, right? Like this is what must exist um, out there because this is the this is reflecting back on us. And so this is must be what I'm supposed to do, right? To be a part of that story. Um, but we know that the people who are participating in the storytelling, A, aren't necessarily the people who are being reflected, right? So we see images of women in media um, who look a certain way, but they're not the storytellers, right? The storytellers are, you know, whoever's, no offense, you know, like sitting behind the camera or writing the story or, or creating um, whatever messages that they want out there, right? Um, and so there are these really there are these mixed messages of like, who am I? What am I supposed to be? Uh, am I supposed to look like what I see? Uh, on screen, and if I am, how do I do that? And um, as we know, we've seen um, time and time again these stories of people who are saying, "I, I couldn't, I couldn't even achieve this if I wanted to." Right? There's photoshopping. There's a lot of eating disordered um, behaviors and things like that. So I think that um, you know, if the narrative can change, then perhaps our understanding of beauty and body image can change as well. Maggie, do you want to add to that? So growing up, um, even, I, I know you mentioned as early as 10 years old, when I was 12, I would dream about being like a Victoria's Secret model, maybe even Britney Spears, and I would have my eight-year-old sister take photos of me in bikinis and lingerie because that was what I, what I saw on television, what I like, really aspired to be. And growing up, I just had that vision, like, I really want to do this, like, this is great, but I'm always short of something. I started finally, my, my mom never let me do anything because she was always scared for me, like I'd get like shut down and stuff. When I was 18, I finally started going to um, uh, what was it, agencies and they'd always shut me down. Oh, you're too short, your hips are too big, like minimum height to be a model is 5'9", I'm 5'7". Mm -hmm. um, so it took me, you know, I, I got a lot of doors closed on me and that actually really lowered my self-esteem. Mm -hmm. um, I did get anorexia. I went through that um, for a while when I was like 18, 19, and made my skin worse. So that even like, mm. that even just like, added just to added the pressure, to the, yeah. you know, the pressure. Um, it, was, it was a really hard time in my life. So I do, it, like media does have that negative effect. And I feel that people shouldn't really believe that as like true you know well and if I can just not. add mm -hmm. sorry mm -hmm. that um, I feel I, it it seems just in observation that it's mm -hmm. getting worse um, from because of social media right so mm -hmm. it used to be that um, you know if somebody was a supermodel then she would be criticized, right? But she could only be criticized by the critics, right? Yeah. But now everyone's a critic, and everybody has a platform to be a critic. And so the the comments, I mean, if you've ever, you know, checked out a YouTube video and read the commentary. So that, negative sometimes, yeah. And, and so everybody gets a chance to 
be, a be unkind, <laughs> right? Yeah. And tear down people's self-esteem. And self -esteem. tear down yeah. people and, even you know, further, yeah. People are actually usually their harshest critic themselves. Right. So I don't know if you went through that, where you were the one who's like most judgmental about sure. how you look, besides the people closing the doors saying, you're not the right height, you're not the right, th but still then what did you do with it? Did you make it even feel worse? I actually did go through a depression for sure. about a year. Sure. Um, I did see a therapist actually oh, at school. So, um, I, I mean, I ended up overcoming that. Oh. Um, I got in a really healthy relationship. I know I shouldn't be like dependent on a man, but you know, <laughs> and um, but, but you know that. So that's, well, that's the other step. At least you so know fine. it helps. Like he supports what yeah. I do now, yeah. like as an in Instagram influencer and model. So. Um, my self-esteem has grown since mm -hmm. then because I've also helped like myself through that. So. And I know you were saying that the model agencies were saying that you were not a good fit. So what type of fit were they looking for? I know you said five, nine. Um, what else? Taller, thinner. Um, my body type was good, but it was only good for like swimwear. And finally, when I did get into an agency, I would always get sent out on um, swimwear auditions. I'd go to these auditions and they'd be like, your body's perfect, but you have no boobs. Oh, God. <laughs> so there was always, yeah. you know, like yeah. something, something there Never that good was enough. wrong with me, Never you know. Enough. And that was actually my next question. We talked on the phone um, and I know you talked about breast augmentation. Do you feel like this was inspired because of the media or the modeling agencies? Why do you, do you feel the need to have to go through that? Um, yeah, for myself, I guess since I have gotten my breast done, it really has opened my doors um, through social media. I know that sounds so bad and <laughs> so... Look who's judging. So, you're doing the judging. I'm judging myself. <laughs> like, Don't do it. I know. Easier said than done. I know. Um, but yeah. it, it's opened doors for me. I'm now finally like working with swimwear companies. I'm now finally getting magazines to notice me and it's all not through an agency that like picked me. It's all my own work through social media, oh. you know? So I, I'm the one reaching out to people, getting my jobs, and they're, you know, accepting me. So, so. is that a common thing, yeah. Yvonne, where people judge themselves because they feel like they have to fit this type of image? Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's not just that the women and some men are judging themselves. I mean, sometimes it's the men, the guys. The guys are raised with these, like the Victoria's Secret women mm -hmm. or the famous, like, pop stars and rock stars and the latest celebs and, you know, and they're looking and they're going, oh my God, and a lot of it's closed right, right now. You know, it's like, you know, it's like cut out so you can actually see how skinny the waist is. You can see how big the butt is. You can, the boot, I mean, it's like really revealing stuff lately. And even though it's all different types, which I like, that's, that's to me a good thing that's starting to happen. There's a trend where it can be a Kim Kardashian look with her very voluptuous figure. And then it could be like Kira Knightley, who is the waif look, you know, or, or go, uh, Kate Hudson, who never did anything with her body, and she keeps being booked as romantic leads, you know? And it's, I like that there's a range. Yeah, that's are, a and, good and thing now about Amy Schumer, media. my God, I mean, she's become like the poster girl now. And it's so funny, she's like, no, now for like, I am a size six. I'm like, who knows? I just went to her show, that's funny. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, and she is good. Yeah, she's but, so good. But, but I mean, who knows if she's a size six, but I love how we're starting to show some mm -hmm. diversity. That's actually my next question. Ashley Graham has become one of the first plus size models in the cover of Sports Illustrated. Yes. So this question is for the three of you. We could start with uh, Maggie. What are the positive or negative consequences of plus size models getting media attention? Um, positive? Or negative, or, whatever you I think it's so positive because we're finally altering our attention from these like skinny girls, you know, that are, that we've always looked up to. Um, and it's finally showing us a variety, like all kinds of women are beautiful. You know, it's not just the skinny girl, which she's beautiful too. I'm not saying like, you know, she's not, but um, it's finally give, showing people like different is beautiful, like all kinds of women, so. Shira, do you wanna add to that? Sure. I don't, I don't see there being a downside from it at all. Um, I think the only downside would be for her, right? Like who are the people criticizing her body? Because you know that there are people who are, call, you know, calling her names and making her feel bad. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I believe that good things come when you show a diversity in body types. Good things come when you show a diversity in skin color and 
height and um, you know whatever it is we're talking about right uh, but I think that it's really important to think about the language that we're using because when you think we're calling her plus size mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. she's uh, it, she's average <laughs> you know and I think that um, we've look how far we've come that um, the plus size model is really average and most women probably um, see themselves in her right mm -hmm. um, and it that's again dangerous because we're we're she becomes like the token model who looks different than all the other models right and and she has um, she's selling herself and doing a great job doing it right but mm -hmm. She becomes like a caricature of, you know, what a model should be or should look like versus just being a model, right? She's the plus size model. She's not just a model. And so to me, that doesn't um, talk about acceptance, right? We, we still, we're still not accepting her as a model. We're accepting her as a plus size model, right? But she wouldn't, you know, fit in with the rest of the modeling industry because she's still that, she's different from all of that. And there's danger in that because as you were talking about, there, these images set up expectations. Um, and so then men start to expect right. women to look a certain way and behave a certain way. Right. And, um, whoever it is, right, that we have these expectations and then we internalize those expectations mm -hmm. and that's when the um, self-hate or whatever it is gets right. turned on because we're not meeting those expectations or, you know, we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. But, I mean, I think it's positive. I, I have a, a five-year-old daughter. I want her to know that mm -hmm. her, her body is going to be beautiful no matter what it looks like when she hits puberty, right? And... It's important for me that she sees different images of um, women acro mm -hmm. across all, you know, every level, right? Not just body type, but, mm -hmm. you know. Yvonne, do you want to add anything? To I, I, I think, I know what you're saying about a um, Ashley. Ashley Graham. Graham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we talked about it on the phone. I mm -hmm. said, she's on the cover of Sports, so use mm -hmm. her. So we actually started the conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I like her bravado, though. She's not mm -hmm. just like going to be used as a token. Mm -hmm. I, I like her. She's gutsy. Good. She is. She's. I mean, she's doing that like not your daughter's jeans. I think right. it is. She's doing that with Christy Brinkley for God's sake. Mm -hmm. So they have an older woman. Christy Brinkley looks fabulous. Mm -hmm. She's in her sixties now. So they. I mean, I like how that that it's being framed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that product they're using older women like Dove commercials. We talked about that too. They're using women now of all different sizes, and it's wonderful. It's you know textures of hair, color of skin. Ashley Graham, I like her because she is, she's fierce. You know, she has this kind of like, I'm not going to be a token. Don't dismiss me. I like it. She has confidence. And, and Amy Schumer is doing her thing. She's not a model, but she's very uh, visible right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are women that are saying, don't ignore me. I'm not a token. I fit into all different things. I, I, I can do what the other women are doing. And I do hope it's not going to continue to be a double whammy, because that's what I call it, where women have been kind of like, indoctrinated to believe that, you know, only this limitation of, of looks is beautiful. Uh, men had been subscribing to that too. And now we're starting to widen it open. I mean, I think more than ever, you know, the sixties, it was Twiggy who was called Twiggy because mm -hmm. she was as skinny as a twig apparently. Um, and then we had Christy Brinkley and, and uh, Cindy Crawford and Cheryl Teague who were very more voluptuous. Now we have a range of women that are considered beautiful. So I'm hoping that Do the we? guys get it too. I hope the guys can appreciate that beauty can be in a variety of shapes and sizes and skin, you know, skin color, texture of hair, color skin. I hope. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to ch respectfully challenge you. <laughs> I like it. That's what we're here for. I, for brainstorming. Um, I don't know that we do have a range. I think that we have uh, examples of difference, right? But I think that the overall story is still the same. And the overall story is you need to be within the certain weight, you need to be the certain height, you need to be the certain skin color, hair texture, whatever it is, right? That's the, that's the overall message. I mean, if you look at just television, um, you know, like sitcoms, right? Or if you look at, even if you look at movies, if you look at that movie Bridesmaid, mm -hmm. um, and you have um, the actress's name? Melissa, Melissa McCarthy, McCarthy, right? Yes. yes. 
So here's a representation of a plus size actress who's very funny and who is like mocked <laughs> throughout the whole film, right? That's she true. she is there because she's plus size. Yeah. She's not there because she is um, a good actress, a funny comedian, or whatever it is, right? She's there because of her weight. And I think that that's the problem. That's where I, the, the problem I have with the Dove commercials, right? Uh -huh. It's it's there. It's great. I love that there that there's more diversity on television and all that. But the point of the Dove the Dove commercial is the plus size model, right? Or the plus size person. The point isn't to just like when we get people mm -hmm. representing this diver this level of diversity, and nobody talks about the fact that they're plus size, then I feel like we've come somewhere, right? But as long as we're still saying, oh, what a good job Dove did, they put some plus, li plus size women in, to me mm -hmm. that just says, okay, so they're, they're there because they're plus size. When we accept, when we give actresses roles because they're right for the role and not mm -hmm. because of their weight, yes. and their weight doesn't become a part of the storyline, that they're just there as an actress, then I feel like now we're moving somewhere. So it's you like know. taking the label away. You don't have to say, like, you know, this kind of culture person. You don't have to say this kind of size woman or man. Right. Take it away the label. It doesn't become an identifying mm -hmm. uh, piece of who they are, right? Right, right. to separate them out from mm -hmm. the others. Now, that's a really good point. If they, I guess if they threw away the labels and said not plus size, but just model mm -hmm. or just right. real women. Well, real and that's, women. that's how I feel about Ashley Graham, right? Like, yeah. if we just called her a model. Yeah. Then I feel like we've evolved a little yeah, bit. But as yeah. long as she's the plus size model, yeah. then we're just, you know. And I actually want to compare that to men. A former One Direction band singer, Saint Malik, recently revealed he struggled with an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. So do you believe that men are struggling with their image as much as women are? We can start with Yvonne. I think it's gotten more prevalent. People are living longer. Men are coloring their hair more. Men are getting, <clears> like, <throat> like, they're so fit. You know, they have to be a certain kind mm -hmm. of, like, uh, how many, like, um, Pounds can they lift? I mean, are they? Do they have a washboard stomach? I mean, these these can be men into like all ages. I mean, it's like I think men are really also starting to buy into this thing of they have to look a certain way too to be attractive. So I I, I do think that the media is still it influences women more, but I think and and men to get jobs there's research to get jobs that they want to look a certain way so that they can get hired. There is studies with research that say the more attractive people tend to get hired for jobs. It doesn't even matter what the job is. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, it, it's just, it's prevalent across the board. And that's not fair. Because it's not about maybe how good you look, unless you are a model or a performer. And that fits into your, your um, essence of what you're trying to put out there, your image. But if you're like an engineer, if you are a pediatrician, if you are, you know, a teacher, a professor, that, that's not the qualifications one is supposed to be going by is how you look, men or women. So it's really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Shira, do you want to add to that? I, I do think that men have images or expectations also that they are sort of, um, you know, trying to to fit into, right? Um, and and I, I do see that. So I'm not going to deny that that exists. Um, but there there is the. You know, how often do we see the sort of unfit, um, unkept guy with like a hot girl, right? Or, and and you never see the reverse, right? You never see, um, it, it, it's, it's acceptable for a man to be sort of out of shape. It's acceptable for him to be not put together or unkept or whatever it is, right? It is really unacceptable for, for women, right? The, the critic, we don't criticize men. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you just look across the board at the male actors who don't fit like a standard of beauty, who are very successful, who are, um, you know, getting roles left and right, and again, who aren't caricatures of themselves, right? They are in the role because they're good at that role, um, I think that that's sort of the difference, right? I do think that, um, you know, younger generations of boys are starting to come up against these issues, um, but I still think it's more prevalent with girls. And my last question, actually, uh, we can start with you, Maggie. What can women do to feel better about their bodies or have a positive body image? 
What can we do? I guess for me personally, I there's a lot of sometimes I get negative comments on my Instagram. Um, I I ignore it. I mean, there's we could only be who we are. Uh, the best selves of who we are. Like, mm -hmm. if you feel pretty doing your hair, doing your makeup, do it for yourself. Don't do it because someone tells you to, like, you, you look better doing this way, you know? Um, I feel better when I exercise and work out and eat right, and I, keep, I do that for myself. So it's just doing things for yourself. Shira? Mm -hmm. I think it's really important that we talk to kids at a really young age. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I joke with all of, with my family and friends that I don't let my daughter watch Disney movies. I try not to, right? She's getting to the point where it's, I, it's like out of my control because she's at other people's houses, but she can't watch a movie unless she's ready to talk to me about it afterwards, right? So I want to be able to have a conversation with my girl child and say, why do all the princesses look like that, right? Why That's do, right. they all have the same hair, the same yeah. eyes, the same hips. Why do we think that is? Regardless of the, the princess's race, by the way, right? They all look the same. And so for me, it's about having those conversations really young because I want her to be empowered to, you know, take on whichever, you know, body type is natural to her, right? So. All right. And Yvonne? I like that. Um, Sigmund Freud said that a person forms who they are and how they see themselves 11 years old and younger. Mm. So think about how moldable right. and influenceable kids are, boys and girls. Yeah. Truly, it can be changed. I mean, that's the art of therapy. You know, you go to therapy and you can change certain things, but so much goes into forming the self-esteem of how you see yourself and how you see, how you think the world sees you. So I mm -hmm. like that. You've got to catch people as young as possible, boys and girls, because uh, absolutely. You know, boys have that thing about this is beauty. Mm -hmm. And that's not fair to all the other beautiful women that are out there that they may just overlook because it's not meeting a stereotype or a certain standard. Um, I like the self-care thing that you were saying. I think that's so important. Invest in yourself, mm -hmm. self-love, right? Mm -hmm. So eat right, exercise. Exercise is great. I mean, it just energizes the body. It's interesting. Other research says that a person is seen as the most attractive by a certain quality. You know, the quality, it keeps coming up for men and women. Confidence. Mm -hmm. Confidence, which is another word for saying some self esteem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you invest in yourself and you eat right and you exercise and you sleep enough and you have social supports and you try to have a balanced life and you don't keep comparing yourself to everyone else, everybody's beautiful, everyone is unique. Exactly. You know, that really can then boost up that self esteem, which is the most beautiful thing, that mm -hmm. confidence radiating out. That sounds great. <laughs> Thank you so much, all of you, for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching On Point. You can follow us on social media by searching CSUN On Point. You can watch us on LA 36 Sunday mornings at 1130. And you can listen at KCSN 88.5 FM at 530 also on Sunday mornings. For all of us here at On Point, I'm Brittany Ray.